Hello and welcome aboard. Welcome to Pyongyang in North Korea. Welcome aboard our MiG-15. Yeah. We did the F-86 Sabre a while ago and I finally found a MiG-15 that sort of works. The only downside, of course, you already saw. No virtual cockpit. Oh! It hurts, it hurts, but it is a MiG-15, so... And there is our cockpit. Wowzer Bowsers. Wowzer Bowsers, everybody. That is that is one interesting looking cockpit. I just noticed. <laughs> Alright. Now this could be. I can't believe it's Russians would do this. So those of you that are very familiar with Russian aircraft, I do have a few of you out there. Um, look right here. That looks extremely upside down to me. But maybe that's the way they did things. Maybe. I don't think so, but I don't know. All right, put some flaps. Yeah, we got some flappers. Some flappers. Excellent. Look at that. All that flap. We don't need all that flap. Uh, yes, that's a little bit of flap. That is good. All right, in the cockpit. <clears throat> All right, let's take to the air. Power up our one New Delman N30. Nope, that's wrong. What am I doing? Whoa, I'm driving badly because I'm trying to find my spot here. Here we go. Power up our one Kilimo Kilimov VK1 centrifugal flow turbojet. Produces 6,000 pounds of thrust. There we go found my spot on my notepad. One of the first successful swept wing jet fighters achieved fame in the skies over Korea where early in the war it outclassed everything we had. Especially Wow. What was that? I'm not even sure what that was. Um, <laughs> also, why are you... Okay, so we, we've got a serious up attitude here. Wow. Let's get that... Whoa, does she behave odd? Holy cow. I can't... It's... Um, back inside. Alright, it's going to be a handful to fly this thing and pay attention. Okay, wait, we're going way too fast here. Hold on. That is one tap of the down elevator. Holy cow. No, don't do that. I want you to kind of stabilize. Holy moly mother. Um, Alright. Now that we've been completely thrown off kilter by really weirdness, let's... Is it that... No, it wasn't that coming in. That's weird. Okay. MiG-15, believed to be one of the most highly produced jets aircraft ever. In excess of 12,000 were manufactured. Licensed foreign production may have raised that production total over 18,000. It's a lot of planes. MiG-15 is often mentioned, along with the North American F-86 Sabre, as the best fighter aircraft of the Korean War, and among the best fighter aircraft of all time. Now, the first tur turbojet fighter developed by the Mikoyan Gurevich was the MiG-9. It used a pair of reverse-engineered German BMW 003 engines, it was designed with the straight style wings common to piston engine fighters. Remember that early on, aircraft designers knew straight wing, and that's what they went with. The concept of a swept wing, well, that wasn't quite normal. Look at that. You can even see the engine going around. That's pretty cool. Speaking of, I wonder where my airport is. I have no idea. And I'm going to crash if I'm not paying attention. Good. 
Uh, the Soviet aviation minister... Oh, so the, those German BMW 003 engines, they were completely underpowered. They were not going to do what was necessary for the Russian aircraft program. So the Soviet aviation minister, Mikhail Kreven... Oh, good grief. Krunevich and the aircraft designer A.S. Yakolev suggested to Premier Joseph Stalin that the USSR buy the conservative but fully developed Nenny engine from Rolls-Royce and then just copy him because why not? Now it said that Stalin said, quote, what fool will sell us his secrets? That's one of those instances where Stalin had to eat his words. Because British Labour government and its Minister of Trade, Sir Stamford Cripps, gave them the technical information and the license to manufacture the Rolls-Royce Nene. USSR never paid. Rolls-Royce was upset. Russia said, oops. Now, to take advantage of this new engine, they needed a new airframe. So, two prototypes of advanced high-altitude daytime interceptors to defend against bombers were built. It was at a top speed of 1,000 kilometers an hour. That's about 620 miles an hour. And a range of 1,200 kilometers, that is 750 miles. What are you doing, plane? What are you doing, flight simulator? Good lord. Uh, there's all kinds of weirdness happening. It also, I think, might be North Korea, maybe? Is it, is it no the North Korean airspace that's causing my problems here? I don't know. We're going to fly this way now. As I feel like it. Oh, no. It's the exterior model of the... Oh, the exterior model of the aircraft apparently causes frame rate. All right. Well, whatever. <clears throat> uh, the design that emerged had the mid-mounted 35-degree swept wing slight adhedral. A tailplane that was mounted on a swept tail. Western analysts noted that it strongly remembered Kurt Tank's Focke-Wulf TA-183, which was a follow-on to the ME-262 that never progressed beyond design stage. Now, the aircraft actually bears a much stronger resemblance to the previously mentioned North American F-86 Sabre, which also incorporated German research. The new MiG retain the previous straight wing uh, MiG-9 tail and tailplane placement, whereas the F-86 inherited its low wing from the, Royals Roy, uh, the Royal Navy Sea Fury, which, by the way, had wings similar to a P-51. It's like mix and match your aircraft, right? In fact, the F-86 and the MiG-9 were so similar that U.S. forces painted their planes with bright stripes so that enemies and friendlies would know is that a F-86 or is that a MiG-15 coming at me? That's right. That's why there's stripes on the F-86. Now the duct work on the nose here <clears throat> for the airflow is there because, well, the pilot sits there. It is ducts the air around the pilot into that engine. Now, there are a few problems with this aircraft and a few things to note. Now, one thing is, notice the guns there. These guns were two NR-23 23mm cannons. Those are on the right as you're looking at the aircraft right now. And one New Delman N-37 37mm cannon on the left there. Okay. Now, those, are, those cannons have a low rate of fire and different trajectories. In fact, it was reported that during dogfights, U.S. pilots or U.N. pilots would report that one, uh, the 23 millimeter shells would go over their aircraft and the 37 millimeter shells would go under their aircraft because there were different velocities involved. Kind of, kind of odd. <clears throat> now, uh, those caused a problem because they were designed to destroy bombers. This was a bomber interceptor, after all. Not necessarily a fighter. That was kind of a secondary thing. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that that trajectory 
would and the, the punch of the cannon would destroy a bomber, but it made it more difficult to deal with fighter jets. Now think about the F-86. The F-86 runs 650 caliber machine guns. Much higher rate of fire, but not nearly as much punch. That's where these two aircraft very much differed. Now, the MiG-15 had sufficient power to dive at supersonic speeds, but the original aircraft did not have an all-flying tail. In fact, this one does not, so this is not a BIS, which is a, the later MiG. So it does not have an all-flying tail. Notice it just has elevators back there that I'm waggling around. Now, without that all-flying tail, as the aircraft approached Mach 1, they lost ability to control the aircraft. Therefore, pilots could not exceed Mach 0.92 before flight surfaces became ineffective. Also, this aircraft had a high tendency to spin when stalled, and often the pilot could never recover from that stall. Not really a very good thing there. Now, while this aircraft, with its swept wing and powerful engine, relatively, was superior to the first generation straight wing jets like the F-80 and the British Gloucester Meteor, as well as the piston engine P-51s and the Vaunt F-4U Corsair, that F-86, when it showed up on the scene, well, then it became an even match. The F-86 didn't necessarily have the better of the MiG-15. Some people say, oh, the F-86 is better. It's not. It came down to the pilots. In Korea, for the longest time, Russia denied the involvement of their pilots in Korea. Well, it turned out that their pilots were involved. They were flying. Mainline fight fighter pilots were flying in Korea, and they were matched up against the mainline U.S. fighter pilots. <clears throat> and when they're both highly capable, these this aircraft and the F-86 actually were pretty well evenly matched. Now, when the United States continued advancement to stuff like the F-100 Super Sabre and other aircraft of that ilk, uh, the MiG-15 lost its competitive, its competitive equality, basically. Notice the wing fences. I want to point this out, by the way. <clears throat> Notice the wing fences. That's to handle air slippage. It prevents air from at low speeds from basically sliding off the side of the wing. Now this was handled differently in the F-86. The F-86 used slats. There's no slats on a MiG-15. They use wing fences. The F-86 chose to use slats instead of wing fences. Just, you know, small changes in design philosophy there. All right, back aboard our aircraft here. That's, well, we know what one is, it's this view. Two, that makes it go away. Hmm. Okay, so one does nothing, two is that, all right. Three is even more of that, great. Four, there's GPS. There's altitude. Communication navigation. Electrical, that I can't even read. Hmm, VOR by the looks of it. And all the way out at nine, there is our um, throttle. Anything else? No. Well, there we go. <laughs> now, don't really have a, a runway nearby. I think I do actually, hold on. Is it three? No, it's four. Okay, runway would be this way. I think we're gonna we're gonna run this engine all the way up. There were a few training aircraft, but not very many. So crew is usually one, though you do see some that are crew of two. Maximum speed one thousand and fifty nine kilometers an hour. That is six hundred fifty eight miles per hour at sea level. Range is one thousand two hundred forty kilometers. That is seven hundred and seventy one miles. This aircraft could, in later versions, the BIS version, which is the secondary version, um, could it did have two hard points on the underwing that could carry 100-kilogram uh, bombs, drop tanks, unguided rockets, etc., etc. Somewhere in theory, there's a uh, airport, but you know what? We're not going to worry too much about it. This is a MiG-15. 
The link is in the description as always. It does not have a virtual cockpit. I am sure that if somebody knows of one with a virtual cockpit, uh, they will let me know about it. And then I will make a notation or something like that. But right now, this MiG-15 is adequate. I think it has a few issues, but it is adequate. All right, until next time, I've been Dare Tabbers. This has been your Flight Simulator X Plane Spotlight of the Mikoya Gurevich MiG-15, the famous Korean War fighter that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the North American F-86 Sabre and is considered one of the best jet fighters of all time. Until next time, happy flying, everybody.